Welcome back to Uncensored, live from New York City as the race for the White House officially gets underway. Well, voters across the Midwestern state of Iowa will this evening brave very, very cold temperatures, maybe the coldest ever for an Iowa caucus to select their Republican candidate. Former President Donald Trump is expected to crush the field with potentially as much as 50% of the vote, which would be an all-time record. But can it be stopped and are the polls wrong? Joining me now in the studio, former Conservative MP Louise Mensch and journalist Emily Austin, and political strategist and pollster Frank Lance is in Iowa. Before we go to Frank, who's probably freezing to slow uh, <laughs> extinction over there in Iowa, let's come just quickly to Emily and, and Louise, just to get a reaction to that interview with Thomas Hand with his daughter there. I was struck by how she wanted to be there with him. She never stopped stroking his face, particularly when he cried or got angry. Really powerful. There are some fates worse than death, and what you saw there was a father looking down the barrel at what could have happened to his little girl. Mm. And I think when people forget what actually happened, what kicked off this entire war, they're forgetting that these terrorists took a little girl hostage and put her father through that. And mm. she was one of the lucky ones, horrible to say. But some 13-year-old girls didn't fare as well as that poor little There's child. There's still a did. baby missing now. We've no yes. idea really what's happened to that baby or countless other people. Emily, what did you make of it? I just remember grieving along with the most of the world when we thought Emily was dead yes. and then celebrating when we found out she's alive but still don't really know her fate. And to watch, like you just said, watching her comfort mm. her dad when she's the one who went through the trauma as well as he... Um, just shows you the resilience of kids and like it's sad to say she's too young to remember But we were discussing in the green room. This is something that's gonna haunt her for life And it's you sad. know, I sent him a text just now saying we're getting an amazing reaction to that interview Thomas And I said you are an extraordinary man mm. and he replied. I I'm not I'm just an ordinary person Trying to deal with this like everybody else, which I thought was typically modest of him But actually he's right. You know, these were just ordinary people living in a kibbutz We didn't know who they were and now forever they will be part of the history of this horror that's been unfurling. Um, let me go to, to, to Frank. Um, Frank, let's, let's segue into the election in uh, Iowa, where it all kicks off for real. I've got to say, as a Brit from across the pond, it always seems a bit weird, your system, that so much seems to hinge on Iowa and the strange way they do this. Sell it to me. Well, I'm not going to sell it to you. I actually want to harken back to that interview. I've had the chance to listen to the last 10 minutes of it, and it makes me angry at the politicians over here in America tearing each other apart over nothing, insulting each other, being rude and abusive, that surely when we see these crises that are happening in other parts of the globe, why we must behave like idiots and how bad it makes America look. So, no, I don't want to sell Iowa. I do want to say that Iowa voters are more sophisticated than average. They take the responsibilities very seriously. They do care about the outcome. Donald Trump is likely to get about half the vote. The big question is who comes in second because that individual gets bragging rights for the state that really matters, New Hampshire. Uh, Piers, Iowa makes a statement. New Hampshire makes a difference. And it's mm. just a shame that the statement is being made in weather that's 15 degrees below zero. That presumably will help Trump simply because if you look at all the polling, yes, Nikki Haley's got a bit of momentum and replaced uh, DeSantis into second place. But if you get into the weeds of the of the data, the uh, sort of very positive uh, enthusiasm for candidates, Trump roaring ahead at nearly 90 percent, DeSantis second, Nikki Haley pretty low on enthusiasm. If actually it comes down to who's going to get out of their warm, comfortable home and go and vote in these conditions, you've got to think it helps Trump and may actually help DeSantis a bit. Well, it, it, I think it might hurt Trump because his vote is pretty old. And if you're over 75, going out in this weather is actually dangerous for you. And I think it hurts the Vake Ramaswamy because even though he hasn't been talked about as much, his vote is 18 to 29 year olds and they're less likely to vote. In the end, Trump is going to win big. Whether he crosses that 50 percent threshold, we don't know. The votes have to be counted. But also in the end, it's amazing to me that Donald Trump in most surveys is leading Joe Biden, even though Trump has been indicted 91 times, even though he's been thrown off of two ballots, even though the campaign against him has been so vicious because he himself has turned himself into a victim. 
into someone who's not prosecuted but persecuted. And right now you have to give Trump the narrow advantage in November despite the primaries and caucuses and all this yeah. chaos that's around American politics. Yeah, it's, it's quite extraordinary. It's unprecedented. Emily, I want to play a little clip. This is a Donald Trump last night trying to get his vote out and making a typical Trump remark. You can't sit home. If you're sick as a dog, you say, darling, I've got to make Even if you vote and then pass away, it's worth it. <laughs> now, look, we're all laughing, right? And that's the reaction. I watched this, my old CNN colleagues trying to be serious about this and they couldn't help themselves but laughing. This, Emily, is his Trump card, literally, is that he is funnier than the other candidates. And as we've seen with Boris Johnson in the UK, who became Prime Minister, if you've got a sense of humour and you don't talk and behave like other politicians, you can go a long way and you can make a comeback like Trump. Yeah, I mean, being being 22 years old and Gen Z's epitome, I, I grew up in a Trump election. 2016 was the first election I can recall Trump won that. 2020, Trump participated, lost. But being Gen Z, I grew up watching Trump. And to me, it was always just, yes, he says it as he pleases and he doesn't really think twice before speaking, which is a blessing and a curse. You get the transparency, but you also sometimes need a filter, especially on a global stage. And I think it comes down to a balance, the famous quote, to be loved or to be feared. Now, internationally, you have to be feared, otherwise you risk being taken yeah. advantage of and being a vulnerable country, which America is very vulnerable right now. But at the same time, you risk Trump winning might, you know, even prompt a civil war within America, which nobody benefits from, of well, course. Louise, the other great advantage Trump has, and why we may be seeing this extraordinary comeback, is that Biden looks so weak. Record low approval ratings again this week, and they're already terrible. Um, a lot of Democrats, two-thirds of them, don't think he should run again. But he is, and if he does, you've got to think Trump has a great chance. I don't think Trump has a great chance, honestly. I don't think polls this far out for the general election mean very much. We've seen it over and over again. That said, Joe Biden should not make Hillary Clinton's mistake and start being complacent. In 2020, Joe Biden won because he wasn't Trump. Time for a change is the most effective slogan in politics all the time forever. Now, it's time for a change from Biden. So he's got to be careful, he's got to be cautious. The Democrats, the White House, will be looking at the results of this caucus with, with great interest, very great interest. It's the race for second place. Only Nikki Haley has really managed expectations. She said that New mm. Hampshire's her big state. If she manages to outperform, she could get a bit of a mention <coughs> just in case the Supreme Court throws a monkey wrench into Donald Trump's All right, place. Frank Luntz, no one knows about polling better than you. Uh, what, what are the possible scenarios here? Could we see one, maybe two candidates dropping out by the time Iowa's come out in the wash? Absolutely. Ron DeSantis <laughs> cannot justify continuing after spending more than $100 million, and most of that here in Iowa. If he comes in third, I can't imagine him going beyond tomorrow. And then you also have to look of Vivek Ramaswamy, <laughs> who's self-funding his campaign. Does he get over 10% of the vote? which indicates that there's still some rationale for his campaign. And then you have Asa Hutchinson, who most Brits will never heard of because most Americans have never heard of him. He's a former governor, <laughs> successful <laughs> governor at that. And no one, he's getting 0. Point, or I should say not 0.7% of the vote. Uh, once again, I agree with, with your colleague that you don't trust the polling this early in the campaign, but make no mistake, it's going to be more negative than it's ever been. It's going to be more personal, more vicious, and more Americans are going to say to hell with American politics and American elections as the months continue. OK, prediction time. Let's What's going to happen here, Emily? I politely disagree with you because I don't think Biden's given Americans enough of an incentive to vote for him again. No. I don't. If Biden wins, it's purely out of... I think if it's Biden, Trump, Trump wins. Me too. I think Trump's... And I wouldn't have said that a year ago, but you've got to say, the guy is resilient. I always say with Trump, he has the thinniest skin of any human being I've met in my life. He reacts, <laughs> he reacts to everything, right? Uh, but he has the thickest. He can soak up stuff that would crush any other politician. And, Louise, you've been a politician. If you've got that thick skin like Trump and you can swat away all the buzzards and the flies, you've got a great chance. People like 
always like a political candidate who just speaks his mind and doesn't give a damn. I know you're not a big fan of Boris Johnson, but he had that quality. Trump has that quality. He was obviously joking mm. when he said, you know, go out and die for me to vote. The fact is, he's, I think that Biden will beat Trump quite handily, but I think Trump is the only candidate that Biden could, okay. could beat. OK, let's go quickly back to Frank before he literally freezes to death in front of us. <laughs> Frank, if it's Biden-Trump, can you see a way Biden wins? Well, I want to separate Donald seconds. Trump from Boris Johnson. Boris has written more books than Donald Trump has read. <laughs> I believe that the election is way too... that the election is way too close to call, that either candidate can win. If you force me to bet on it now, I would bet that Donald Trump would come out slightly ahead because his voters are passionate. Yeah, they are.